Look at the light on the water and there comes the sun. Perfect timing. Marvelous. We're just at the cave here. Our famous cave where all those books were a couple of years ago. Isn't that beautiful light? Do you notice if the phone is a little off center? Like it's a little tilted. Yeah, I mean the the camera, the angle. Let me see if I can just get that a little better. Oops, I don't want to toss it. It's a very sensitive issue. I guess it's okay. You can turn your head a little sideways. Oh, there are flowers again, look. We're down here at the end of this good, nice brisk walk from our beloved moon. And there we get that beautiful sunrise. I wonder what's on your minds this morning. Have you read the readings ahead of time? It's a good exercise because it, it provokes the dialogue more, even though this is kind of a monologue. <laughs> Sunrise stroll and chat. It would be great if it were more dialogue, but I guess some of you wanted to hear, to listen. But you could also hear comments of the others, but you have the notes. So that's one way to be in communication. At least you know where you're from. You're saying hello. But you could also share your thoughts. So here we're at the end here. Let me just touch the wire. We used to do that as children to, to make sure we had reached the point. So I put my fingers in here behind it. So I'm on the other side here. <laughs> These palm trees are worth taking a second to contemplate three of them here. Nice biblical number. There are so many things to notice. I hear birds chirping. I don't know if they're coming across to you. They're a little faint maybe for the camera here for the audio. So let's head back a little bit. I left my sticks way back a bit when I started just preparing the phone. So I'm going to have to pick them up. Remind me, I don't forget them. Even before that big track of light comes on the water, the more faint light has a wonderful uh, impression on the water. Or the water gives a nice impression from it. If you check outside the, the strong light on the water, you can see also some of that effect. To be alive, to be able to see, to be able to feel, to be able to hear. to be able to see each other, to talk, to listen to each other. Just look at those flowers again before we go because it's a whole forest of flowers here. From over there, I'm going to zero in a little bit for you. All these flowers. Pink flowers. And over here it really intensifies. And it's a little closer to us so we can zoom in for you. There we go. 
now the sun is fully up. So maybe some of you already have a thought and you're uh, from the readings today. The last word of the first reading is something that caught my attention very clearly. And I'm just going to pull it up here. I hope it's still connected. Oh, I'm afraid. Oh yeah, maybe it'll work. Yes, 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 yes. It said negatively here, I would say it positively. Anyone who loves his brother or sister belongs to God. And that obviously means every brother and sister. Because if we just love some, it's because they please us. But if we love everyone, including the Down syndrome, including the failing person, including the person who doesn't shower except once a year if they need it or not, the person that stinks, maybe stinks morally, maybe stinks politically, but I need to love them. I can't hate my brothers and sisters. Because then I don't belong to God. Look at the way the, the light is shimmering here. I just love that. Isn't that marvelous? Sometimes I think of that, that saxophone jazz music. That was, it's a wonderful world. It's a marvelous world. That famous jazz talent. Was it, what was his name? Armstrong or something. So if I love my neighbor, you know, this is the whole theme. <laughs> if I love my neighbor as myself, I belong to God. I am righteous. I am holy because if I belong to God, I'm holy. And if I hate my neighbor, I don't belong to God. And there's a big question mark about my uprightness and about my integrity as a human being, about my being whole, about my health spiritually and morally and emotionally and psychologically and deep down in my person. There are big question marks. So maybe we should make a little short list of the people with, that give us most difficulty, most headache, most heartache, most memory ache, and pray for the grace. Because I can't make it happen with my little muscles, the little muscles of my soul. I need grace to let flower again. And there's lots of potential for lots of flowers to let flower again that amazing I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's keeper, I am my neighbor's keeper, I am the person's keeper whom everybody throws away and discards and condemns and murders and brutalizes and assaults. I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. And there we are at the very beginning of humanity. And we could say that not just from a historical point of view, but even today. Humanity begins today when I am my brother's keeper. That's when humanity begins. That's when heaven reflects on the earth as the sun is reflecting here on the Sea of Galilee. I belong to God then. Isn't that marvelous? To belong to God. And over here in the, you remember that passage in the, I think it's Matthew chapter four, it says, the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, a land sitting in darkness and doom, has seen a great light. The land beyond the way of the sea, 
the Via Maris, a famous geographical memory from Isaiah, picked up in Matthew 4. Light has seen, they've seen a great light. And they're walking along at the lake. And this other so stranger is walking along at the lake. And John the Baptist calls out, look, this is the Lamb of God. He's giving a big hint to his followers, John and Andrew, to follow him because he must decrease he must decrease and Jesus must increase. And sure enough, they're following him and he's walking along the lake in a sunrise stroll and chat. And Jesus noticed and he turns around and he says, hey, what, what are, you, are you looking for something? Are you looking for somebody? Like, what, what, what are you looking for? And their answer was, where do you live? And he said, come and see. So he probably keeps walking and they catch up to him and they're chatting. What's your name? I'm Andy. I'm Johnny. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? Nazareth. What's your dad do? He's a carpenter. Are there good people in Nazareth? <laughs> and then the fascinating thing is that was a little afternoon chat. Actually, it wasn't sunrise. It was like more like sunset strolling chat. And it was four o'clock in the afternoon. So depending on the time of the year, four o'clock here, the sun is set. But uh, John remembers that moment decades, scores of years later. He remembers the moment he met him. He remembers the moment he met him. It, it's, it, it's, 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 it's not just scratched, it's deeply engraved in golden letters in his heart, in platinum letters, and you can't find the material to write it. It's a gorgeous, bright, warm memory that changed his life to have met him, opened up a path of light through the jungle, a walkable path. And now his life was changed forever. He had direction like, well, he was having direction already, but he was looking a lot. And then what's the first thing Andrew does? I am my brother's keeper. He goes to his brother and he said, we found the Messiah. The one that's written about in the scriptures. Oops. I forgot my sticks. Where did I leave them? Oops, 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 oops. Ooh. Um, and I think they must be up here. Maybe they're still up a little further. Although I doubt it. Oh, here they are. Not distracted with those flowers, you see. Oh. The camera will help you to find how to do it. There we go. These are great sticks. I found them down there at the side of the lake a couple of months ago. They're really great claws that when you're doing Mount Arbel on a rocky slope, on a difficult slope, they're a great help. So anyways, um, Peter goes, uh, Andrew goes and gets Peter. You know, I'm my brother's keeper. It's amazing, there's so much goodness there. Like a spontaneous thing. He found Peter. What does that mean? He was looking for him. 
I'm looking for my brother to help him. I'm looking to be a blessing for my brother. I'm looking for reconciliation if there's a problem. If I found a treasure, I'm going to show it to him. I'm going to share with him. Imagine every family living like this, spouse looking for their spouse. Oh, I want to share this with you. I found this. You're going to like this. I was thinking of you when this happened. Have to share it, have to share it. See, that's why God created the world. He had to share it. He had to share his life with us. To share our lives with our brothers and sisters. To be a blessing for them always, never a curse. No, 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 no. Just goodness. Just goodness, just blessedness. That's blessedness, that's heaven on earth. And we're sharing goodness with our brothers and sisters. All of them, everyone. The other race, the other people, the other language, <clears throat> the other neighbors, the other faith community members. Everyone, 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 everyone. I think that's enough for today, people. God bless you. Let me turn this around. I got these sticks here. Where are we here? There we go. <laughs> so these are my sticks, okay? camera out this side they're a bit broken up at the top but they're absolutely fantastic I just love them they're a little bit of weight in them so they're a good exercise and they are um, have a good grip and they're smooth on the hand I'll let me turn the camera around so you can see that you got enough of me I can show it to you better so they're very smooth and they're dry but they're substantial so in the first mile this morning, you know, I had good shoulder exercise, came along speedily, and there we go. That's enough, people. God bless you. See you later, alligators. Oh, we did that already. <laughs> so goodbye. Heading over to Instagram now.